verse 213. The mind being influenced by habit energy, there rises a something resembling real existence. As the ignorant do not understand, it is said that there is the birth of realities. Do we ever stop? Do we ever stop to consider our situation? There's always something to be gotten on with, important things. Each day's got its own demands. And if we do manage to minimise these demands, and if there's the occasional break, we might find ourselves a little bored. How often do we stop to consider our situation? The situation of being alive in this universe. How often do we stop to appreciate how peculiar it is? And we don't stop, or at least we rarely stop, because of what's described here as habit energy. Habit energy. And this habit energy takes for its core motivation the understanding that this is real. This is the real world. You have to get on with things. This is it. You can't argue with that, can you? And in fact, we look carefully, we'll find that this is the core assumption, that this is reality. You listening to this video, it's reality. You having to answer your phone or check your latest text message or get yourself a cup of tea. This is reality. We're not going to quibble with this, are we? Well, yes we are. Because there's another possibility. We are told that we are being influenced by this habit energy. And this habit energy sounds a little bit mysterious, but I think the most practical way of understanding it is to realise it as our pattern of moods. It's what inclines us to engage the day in certain ways. There are infinite possibilities. Everybody's got a different way or slightly different way of engaging the day according to their disposition, their psychological and emotional disposition according to their pattern of moods. And this verse tells us that this is what the mind is influenced by. The mind. So is there a possibility for the mind not to be influenced by this, by a pattern of moods and by this core assumption that this is what is real. So it says in the second phrase, as the ignorant do not understand, it is said that there is the birth of realities. Well, as I've said before, we don't want to get into some kind of elitism here, because even as enlightenment practitioners, we get sucked in to that core understanding that this is what is real. Verse 214 tells us, as long as external objects are discriminated as possessing individual marks, 
The mind is confused, being unable to see its own delusion. But before I continue with that, let me just focus a little bit more on that last phrase of the previous verse. It is said that there is the birth of realities. Well, this is Professor Suzuki's own expansion. I think the original would just say that it is said that there is birth. And it's a phrase which is often used. But I think we can understand it as, as this inclination to believe that what we're experiencing right now is real. This is the nature of consciousness. Whatever consciousness is experiencing, at that moment, it imbues it with reality. This is what happens when we're awake. It's what happens when we're in a dream. It's what happens when we're hypnotized. It's what happens when we're watching a drama. We take it as real at that moment. Sometime afterwards, perhaps immediately afterwards, or perhaps after consideration, we retract its reality. But at that moment, whatever consciousness is experiencing, that is what is real. So this is the birth of realities. So the confusion or the ignorance is not realizing that this is the nature of consciousness. So in some sense it's real, but in another sense it's not real. It's not real in the way that we think it is. So this is why it says there arises a something resembling real existence. And verse 214, which I read out, is going into this in a little bit more detail. Because what is happening at any particular moment is real objects are being discriminated. This is the same process. Whatever is being experienced is taken as real. And, and so there has to be something that is taken as real. A real object is being discriminated. And it says here, I discriminate it as possessing individual marks. And there are two aspects here to consider. First of all, the individual marks, whatever they are, are what attract our attention. Could be a particular shape, a particular sound, a particular tone, a particular ambience, a particular smell. There's something about it that attracts our attention. This is usually the first of the five skandhas, what's called the rupa. But let's not bother about that right now. And it says individual marks. So what happen, what's happening is we're discriminating an object and giving it individuality. And this is most apparent in dreams. In dreams we discriminate certain things perhaps a certain person, and we regard them as an autonomous individual, even though they're a function of our own awareness. And that's what's happening in the waking state as well. Everything that's going on, we discriminate objects and we imbue them with individuality by virtue that they've attracted our attention. It doesn't matter whether it's an animate or inanimate object, whether it's a rock, a wave in the sea, television, a person, or some other entity. So this is the process. The mind is confused, being unable to see its own delusion. And this is a delusion which is perpetuated by habit energy, by our cycle of moods by our pattern of moods and the belief that this is real. So all we really need to do at the moment is acknowledge this, acknowledge that this is the situation. Ex 
examine it. And in doing so, step back from it a little. Free yourself from it a little. Contemplate these verses. See what they're pointing to. That's what these verses are encouraging us to do. And the next few verses continue with this examination. <laughs> 